nothing that, that happens in our bodies that we don't have control over. Can I say that again? That there's nothing that happens in our bodies that we don't have control over. That there's nothing that goes on in our minds that we don't have control over. I don't care what you think may be hereditary or genetic. There is nothing. But the enemy wants us to think all throughout our lives, we don't have a choice. You were born into this. You're the way you are because that's the family you were born into. So you just got to take it and just live with it for the rest of your life. Whether it's sickness, whether it's poverty, whether it's shame, whether it's pain, no matter what it is, the enemy wants you to think that the things that he's thrown your way all your life, you got to take it and put up with it. But the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. I thank God for the power that he's given us. Amen. The word says in Proverbs 6, 2, you have been trapped by what you said ensnared by the words of your mouth. Proverbs 18, 20 through 21 says, words satisfy, this is the message version, the mind as much as fruit does the stomach. Good talk is as gratifying as a good harvest. Words kill, words give life. They either poison or fruit. You choose. That's what it says. That's the word. You choose. So we have power to choose. And the way that we choose is by what we're thinking and by what we're saying out of our mouth. When we say something that's diabolically opposed to the word of God, we forfeit our power. We say, here, take my weapon. Here, take my word. Here, take everything that I've gained up to this point. You can have it because I'm being careless. We forfeit our power, but yet we want the power to be manifested in our lives. We want the power because we got things that need to be broken off of our lives. We got things that need to be broken off our family's lives. We got things that need to be broken off people that we come in contact with. We want the power, but the very initial point of where the power is received, we cut it off. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And so it's our words, our words that have power. And so we have to have our our thoughts and our words to line up with our deeds. So, So what is our gauge? Does it glorify God? So when we train ourselves with the right thoughts, when we train ourselves with the right words, when we train ourselves with the right deed, the bottom line is, does it glorify God? That is going to help us to make the right decisions and the right choice. 